Why aren't vultures as strong as eagles? Eagles and vultures are perhaps the most popular raptors in scientific studies and the eyes of animal lovers, with the former's fame matching the latter's infamy. The eagle is often perceived as a symbol of nobility and strength, while the vulture commonly represents all that is frowned upon – corruption, selfishness, and dirty cunning. But do these perceptions match reality? Are vultures simply too weak to be compared to the mighty eagle? And if so, why? That's exactly what we aim to find out in today's video, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Vulture 101 Today, there are 23 vulture species from different families and subfamilies under the Accipitriformes order, which makes them diurnal birds of prey. We have the Carthartidae family, also known as New World vultures, which is home to seven species. Then there are the Gipatini and Egypiani, aka Old World vulture subfamilies, under the Accipitridae family. As you can see, calling the vulture family tree complicated is one of the biggest understatements in the animal kingdom. What's even more confusing is that despite the shared name of vulture, Old World and New World species are not even that closely related. Their familiar looks and mannerisms are more a result of coincidental evolution rather than like-for-like -like genetics. It seems early taxonomists had also been deceived by perception when they lumped all vulture species under a vulture genus. However, this has since been rectified thanks to DNA sequence studies that reveal the significant differences among the birds. The first group of Old World vultures, Gipatini, is home to four genera and five extent species, which range from Southern Europe, the Caucasus region, and Africa. Notable examples include the bearded vulture, Egyptian vulture, and the palm nut vulture. There are also two harrier hawk species in this subfamily. Of all the Gipatini members, only the bearded and Egyptian vultures display the hallmark vulture trait of scavenging primarily on already deceased creatures. The other three species are notable omnivores, partaking in palm fruits and olives as well as hunting for smaller critters like rodents and frogs. This penchant for hunting is why taxonomists regard Gipatini vultures as more akin to the snake-hunting raptors of the Circatini subfamily than other vulture groups. However, the second group of old-worlders, Egypiini, are classic vultures, bald heads and all. There are six genera and 13 extant species, ranging from the Himalayas to Bangladesh to Central Europe and all the way down to the Cape of South Africa. Fossil evidence suggests that there were even Egypiini species in Australia. Most Egypiini vultures are thriving despite ever-increasing human encroachment, a testament to their strong adaptability. Notable species include the Indian vulture, white-backed vulture, lappet-faced vulture, and cinerous vulture. All existing Egypiini vultures are relentless scavengers that live and breathe for carrion. These birds are notable cleansers of their respective ecosystems, stripping carcasses of every shred of rotten flesh. While it is undoubtedly gross to us, this role is crucial for preventing the spread of disease. Essentially, vultures are nature's very own waste disposal service. In the New World, this role falls to the cathartidae, which is derived from the Greek term cathartes, which translates to purifier. You may also have heard people using the word catharsis in the context of physical or even emotional cleansing or purging. This vulture family consists of five genera, five vulture species, and two condor species that are native to the Americas. Species include the turkey vulture, king vulture, and greater yellow-headed vulture. We also have the notorious black vulture, which is among the more aggressive vulture species. Black vultures are known for attacking defenseless animals to speed up the dying process. Condors are another notable part of this subfamily. The Andean condor boasts the largest wingspan of all raptors at nearly 11 feet 3 meters, and a maximum weight of 33 pounds 15 kilograms, making it the largest bird of prey in the world. Its maximum altitude of 21,000 feet 6, meters, is the third highest among all vultures, behind Rupel's vulture and the bearded vulture. Now, earlier in the video, we spoke about coincidental evolutionary traits that span across the different families and subfamilies. One main trait is the consumption of carrion as a staple part of the diet. Naturally, all animals die, be it from illness, old age, or predation. Be it predator or prey, death comes for all. Nature generally doesn't let all these corpses go to waste, which is where scavengers come in. Scavenging is something that some animals live off exclusively, or what noble predators do to get by in lean times. 
Vultures are generally in the former camp, often trailing and lurking behind predators during hunts or keeping a sharp eye on animals that look to be clinging to life. Vultures will track a sick, starving, or dehydrated animal for days, waiting for it to succumb. Black vultures might even try to grab a bite while the animal is still alive. The second trait vultures have is the ability to fly at very high altitudes. This broadens their horizons, allowing them to uh, have a bird's eye view of the landscape. The Rupel's vulture can climb to nearly 37,000 feet, 11,300 meters in the air, patrolling desert skies for easy pickings. High altitude flight also helps limit the amount of physical exertion on the vulture's part. Remember, these birds may be in the air for hours upon hours in some of the world's most unforgiving environments. The higher they fly, the easier it is to surf air currents and minimize flapping. Aiding that impressive altitude are the incredible senses all vultures have. Eyesight is arguably a vulture's greatest tool in the search for food. Their vision is up to eight times better than ours, and combined with their lofty altitudes and perches, they can spot a rabbit carcass from over three miles away. Nothing escapes a vulture's sight. Vultures, like a lot of birds, don't have binocular vision like humans and other animals with front-facing peepers. Their eyes are on either side of their heads, giving them a central blind spot. So to find food, they will circle the skies to get sideways views of the ground and gradually come in for a spiral landing. Vultures can also call upon a sense that most other birds hardly rely on – smell. The turkey vulture, for example, can detect rotting meat from over a mile away. Its sizable nose bulbs are a good indicator of this raptor's incredible olfactory prowess. Another notable adaptation, particularly in Cathartidae and Egyptiani vultures, is the significant lack of feathers on their heads and necks. This balding likely occurred for sanitary reasons. You see, vultures are known to literally jump headfirst into a dead animal's innards as they jostle for position when eating. A lack of feathers makes it harder for maggots, bacteria, and other disease-spreading agents to cling onto the vulture. Speaking of eating, vultures are armed with curved beaks that are a hallmark of all birds of prey. These sharp beaks are very strong and more than capable of shearing morsels of flesh from bone. However, unlike most other raptors, vultures typically have flattened feet with relatively small, blunt talons. This evolution allows vultures to walk and waddle across the ground more effectively than other birds of prey that use their feet and claws to snatch prey. Vultures need flatter feet because they eat most of their food on the ground, where it dies. Vultures also need to stand on their food sometimes to help them with ripping off flesh. Additionally, they need to move quickly on the ground to get away from bigger meat-eaters who are unwilling to share carcasses. Lions, tigers, wolves, bears, hyenas, leopards, and bigger vultures are but a few examples. Another interesting fact about vulture feet is how they tend to be white. This is a result of the excrement vultures dump on them to cool themselves down and kill off germs. The uric acid in this waste serves as a natural disinfectant after waddling about in rotten gore. Vultures versus Eagles the term eagle refers to one or all of the 68 extent families under the Exipitridae family, which is also home to the Old World vultures. There are only 14 eagle species native to the New World, with the rest located in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Oceania. Unlike vultures, all eagles from the tiny South Nicobar serpent eagle to the mighty harpy eagle are keen and prolific hunters. They all rely on excellent vision, speed, and precision to tackle a wide range of prey, including rodents, reptiles, amphibians, fish, birds, and small mammals. A lot of eagles, like the African fish eagle or the aforementioned Nicobar serpent eagle, tend to specialize in feeding on certain prey animals. However, most will take on anything they can overpower or overwhelm. The golden eagle, a cunning generalist, will stomp on snakes as well as hairy mountain goats into slipping off precarious edges. Generally, bigger eagles go for bigger prey. Africa's martial eagle, for instance, will swoop in on prey as large as monkeys and hyena cubs. Eagles snatch at prey using their powerful talons, claws that are as sharp as any in the animal kingdom. These talons can easily impale flesh, delivering killing blows to smaller animals and ensuring bigger ones don't wrestle free. Unfortunately, these curved talons mean eagles are better suited to perching rather than walking on the ground as efficiently as vultures. 
When it comes to killing, eagles may use talons or, in the case of larger prey, gravity. However, some prey, like fish, may be eaten alive. Like vultures, eagles have powerful beaks designed for ripping off chunks of meat. Because of their need to jostle with live prey, eagles are significantly stronger than vultures of comparable size. Eagles are more active when pouncing on food when compared to the more opportunistic vulture families. Eagles generally attack in short but powerful bursts that culminate in picking up and flying away with a resisting live animal. In contrast, vultures glide in search of easy pickings. Additionally, eagles look for food at lower altitudes than vultures. This demands more flapping and ultimately more power. Humans have been aware of the eagle's strength for centuries, and many societies have duly adopted it as a symbol of nationhood, military might, sports teams, and beyond. Of course, despite their stellar credentials as unstoppable aerial killers, eagles are not above scavenging. After all, a free meal is a free meal. Most species will partake in carry, and if free kills are hard to come by. The bald eagle, America's national pride, is often spotted ripping through road kills along the country's highways. Other eagles around the world will also get in the muck with vultures to raid dump sites for dead flesh.